Hello, welcome to the channel and thanks for joining me. Today we're taking a look at the MGR61 and that's the AM FM stereo radio cassette player from Sanyo and it dates from around 1986. Now this is for my personal collection. I'm a massive fan of Sanyo units for various reasons going back to my youth as regular viewers to the channel will know. So this one is for my personal collection as I say and I believe it's complete or at least mostly complete so great opportunity to get hold of one but I believe it doesn't work or at least that's what the seller said it doesn't work properly so I've genuinely not had a look yet I've opened it from the box obviously but this is as far as I've got so I wanted to share the kind of opening up and any service work that's required with you guys today won't be a very long video hopefully hopefully there's nothing major wrong with this so this is the outer box obviously but the reason I say that is because it's got the sticker here that says blue and quite often people will find an old box and then an old unit and marry the two together and they're not actually an original set and I believe this is an original set so here we go then well I've got to say oh exciting it is actually really exciting when you see stuff like this it's got the original original card like an overlay just as a packer over the top instructions are here look like they're in good condition as well Sanyo went through various stages of having thick instruction books and sort of multilingual books and stuff like that in their instructions then they went through a stage of printing the instructions just onto the back of the box to save with any inserts at all this is obviously a halfway house here which is Kind of a fold out leaflet probably about a4 size something like that and we've got a guide to the main controls which i'll just show you there so you can see as i say i'll explain that though in a minute and then just an idea on the uh, the operation of the unit and how to clean the head the capstan and the pinch roller for regular maintenance so what else have we got here then okay the sanyo warranty card 1986 so um yeah 38 years old now a little bit out of date 13th of november 86 in fact i'll turn that around for you to see that way up but essentially this is all all looks legit from march electrical supplies limited there we go marvelous so here it is then i'm a bit weird like that by the way a lot of people just dive in and discard all the paperwork and stuff but i always think it's it's like christmas or your birthday or something when you sort of oh look what's in here what's in here? And you kind of keep putting off all the excitement till you get to the <laughs> to the end so here is the unit which i'm just having a quick cursory look now and a shake looks pretty good so we'll come back to that in one moment and true to form as i say about uh, saving the best till last i've got the headphones here so just before we come back to the main unit, I'll show you the headphones. And yes, they are. They are legit. Let's have a look. Will that focus? Yep. Sanyo headphones there. Plastic bottoms, metal slider for the head bracelet. Head bracelet? Is that a headband? That's the word I'm looking for. And yep. So they articulate on the spindles just there and they're not broken. Quite often these can be just snapped off, which is a real pain to try and get back on again. And they've got the original foams as well. Now you can still buy the original foams. These are about 40 mil foams, I think. So I may put some brand new ones on in time. We'll see. See how they are, really. But it'd be nice just to put some fresh, bright ones on. But then also it's cool to keep the original ones for posterity. Also, obviously, we've not tested any of this yet. But uh, any old personal stereos can be prone to crackling and problems at the headphone jack socket, where it's constantly in and out of the machine and constantly being worn i've got a bunch of these on order actually so i've got quite a lot of old headphones that would work if it wasn't for that particular connection so i'm looking to uh, re-plug a lot of the old headphones so anyways i'm just going to put the headphones the paperwork instructions what have you just gently to one side for now and we will take a look at the unit proper here she is then so as i say radio cassette full stereo capability on this doesn't have uh, chrome or metal tape facility or anything like that it's your regular type ones but nonetheless from 1986 
these Sanyo units do sound pretty good. They're pretty clear, good frequency response, nice and powerful. And so in terms of your actual controls though, we've got the volume, master volume there, no left and right separate ones on this one. Select the switch for your tape and your radio. If you are on radio, you've got your AM and you've got your FM and then your FM stereo. If you are receiving stereo and the multiplex is working properly, there's a little LED light just there. And there's your headphone output, uh, output socket just there and your tuning dial, which should, here we go, fingers crossed. Yep, the tuning dial does work the needle. The reason I say fingers crossed is I've had instances with radio cassettes in the past where you've got broken dial cord or worse, the actual mounting points for the dial cord have gone inside and you can't tune the radio anymore, even though the circuitry itself is okay. All right then, so again, nice chrome trim along the edge. And in terms of transport controls, you've got the play, stop of course, fast forward, but you've also got rewind on this one. Now, when I grew up as a kid, I had the MGP9 and that one was the tape only, there was no radio on it and it didn't have rewind either. So if you wanted to listen to your favorite track, you'd have to kind of you'd turn it over, fast forward it, turn it, you know, turn it back over and hope for the best really. So believe it or not, something as simple as a rewind button was really quite something to have on a cassette player in 1986, especially as a youngster. Different, I think, if you'd moved on to some of the, um, you know, the, the sexier ones, as it were. I remember my dad had a hit, uh, no, not Hitachi, it was a Toshiba a KT, maybe a 4086, something like that. And that one had the graphic equalizer, it had Dolby, it had the digital radio with presets on it, sliding equalizers on the front, you name it, the whole shebang. But of course, Dad earned more money than I did on my paper round, so uh, I could only settle for something a lot simpler. Anyway, here it is. Looks like it's in pretty good condition, as I say. So, battery cover clips in nicely. The contacts look pretty clean. The ribbon is good, so that doesn't show any signs of any previous leakage. So I'm going to put some batteries in now. And we shall see... Oops, missed the uh, battery ribbon entirely then. Right, let's have a look. Does it turn for a start? Okay, well it does. It rewinds. A little bit noisy, but hasn't been used for a long time. We'll forgive it that. Right, okie dokie, next job then. Actually, I'm going to put some period correct speakers in. And I've got some JSX-37s here from Sanyo again from around 1986. So you'll notice they've got the same got the same logo. If I just put that next to there. So um, all part of the same series really. Tiny little, I think they're 200 milliwatts, these little speakers. If I remember rightly. Yeah, 200 milliwatts at 16 ohms. So tiny little things don't sound great, to be honest, but you know, as a kid, you'd stand this up, you'd have the speakers next to it, proper little home stereo, just the job. Right, anyway, where were we at? So we're gonna try it with a tape now. I'll take that as a fail. We'll do it one more time. <laughs> all righty rewind no fast forward no all right so that's basically a sign that the belts have gone if it's kind of working without the load of the cassette in there but it doesn't work when the tape's in there it means the belts perished it's slipping um so that's obviously the situation we've got here you could hear how warbly it was as well so it wouldn't be i wouldn't be surprised if the belt that comes off is oversized and more like a teardrop or guitar pick shape so we'll figure that out as we go just while we are here though i'll also just try the radio and we'll go to fm stereo right a couple of things to note first is we're gonna have to kill the lights because the led lights will interfere quite often with the fm signal but also there we go. I wanted you to see the FM stereo light and straight away you can you, look at that. Brilliant. And I've got to say the radios on this 
are very good. Admittedly, from here is a bit trickier because we're trying to wave speakers around in the air to hold as users aerials. But you'll see, you get the idea. There we go. Marvellous. Right, let's get these lights back on. Cool. So, yes, it needs a bit of a polish. It needs a bit of a clean. It looks like it's self-coloured plastic as well, so we might be able to polish some of this up a little bit. If not, we'll just get some plastic and vinyl dressing on that. At least make it look a little bit better. Right. With my bad eyesight, I missed the battery ribbon when I put the first one in, so I'll just pop that out with some tweezers. There we go. Coolie. Oh, right. Four screws to undo on this one. And then we'll gently move the back cover away, which has got nothing on there save for the, the battery ribbon attached just on there. Marvellous. Okay, folks, here we are. And the first thing I notice is that someone's been in here and had a bit of a merry old time with the DC in. So we haven't actually tried that yet, but I can see all sorts of almost superfluous cables there. It looks a little bit of a mess, to be honest. So I might actually just check to make sure that even works at the moment. So I've just hooked up, I don't know if you'll see that, positive tip, three volts. I'm gonna plug this into the board, see if it works. Yes, it does. All right, good. So I'm guessing somebody's affected some sort of repair to the power system on this, maybe replace the jack or something like that, but it is working. So we'll let that go, I think. Next stage then is getting to the belts. So we need to undo a screw just here. Might need to change the head actually. Yes, I do. Because it is a smaller screw for these, if I remember. There she is. And there should be a tiny little washer as well. And there. That is. Just put that away. Okay, right. Then it's a case of just trying to move the board outwards. And there's the belt. I'm going to try and do this without actually having to desolder anything, although one of those cables is rather tight just there so I'm going to have to be super careful when I do this but basically the belt is just there if I was in fact just to put that uh, power supply back in and there we go yeah so what I'm doing, you can't really see this, because we've detached the circuit board, I can no longer activate the play button, so I'm having to use the little switch on the board and manually power that up. And as soon as I put any pressure on the pulley, I'm talking in tongues here, but as soon as I put any, any pressure on the capstan, you can hear the motor spinning up. Basically the belt's definitely slipping on that. So I've got to be super careful Getting the belt off dead easy. I'll use tweezers for no other reason than there we go. Saves me having to open it up too far to get my hands all the way in there to take that off. But basically there's the belt and as we said, it's kind of teardroppy. You might not see that so much from there because of the angle, but basically it's got like a guitar pick shape to it and it's obviously formed itself just around the around the motor spindle so I'm going to get a new belt put that on and to be honest that's all we should need to have to do okay I've got a belt that I think is the right one now I have to apologize in advance 
because basically I'm rather tied here on what I can show you because the motor the motor spindle is rebated it's kind of inset as it were down into the motor there um, I'm trying to hold this open so you can see it at the same time of putting this over here yeah I might actually go for a slightly smaller belt you know but you get the idea once I've got the right size belt I'll just slip that over those two pulleys and we should be able to put it back together again I'm just super super conscious of these this little rat's nest of cables here and one of them this tiny little black one the earth from the battery spring is kind of inset into the middle of that lot and I, if I detach that I think I'm just going to be in a world of pain so I've got to be super careful okay so the belt is on what I was trying to explain there we go nice metal flywheel just there look and that goes onto the motor spindle down in there the only problem is it's kind of inset into the housing so in order to get that on I am literally tethered here just by one tiny and very fragile little cable just take a quick look at the circuit board this way though for anyone that's interested in the in the layout or the chips or anything like that but yeah um, normally I'd crack this open for you to have a proper look but to be honest it's quite fragile in this state so I'd rather just get it back together better the devil we know because once it's screwed back together it'll be a lot more solid a lot more stable so the other thing we need to make sure when we put this back in is that the switch is operating correctly right if you look in fact let me just screw this in first and I'll explain okay that's the circuit board screwed back in and there's a tiny little inspection hole there just that tiny little window and when I press play you may you may or may not see but essentially there's a little window just here and the blades if I can show you almost impossible you'll see anyway you'll see the blades move there which is what's making the contact of the leaf switch there for the play mechanism if that's not put in correctly then you'll find you get a press play or fast forward and the motor will not engage because you haven't actually closed the circuit so you have to make sure that it's in the right position when you screw the board back in right okay that looks all okay to me so far I think what I might just try and do now real quick is let's see if we can get this powered up okay she's turning see if it works and then we can adjust the motor speed from there okay it could do with picking up a tiny bit to be honest and also I will replace the belt with a better quality one as well when I get a second I haven't got the exact one to hand today so uh, but this is perfectly good enough just for keeping it up and running and to stop the existing belt from degrading I shan't be using this much it's more just for keeping it working for now really and to show you guys how to do it if you have one that you would like to to actually repair yourself right so the speed needs picking up a tiny bit I would suggest however we can't do that with the batteries in ironically because they get in the way of the adjustment potentiometer which is just in here so what we need to do is actually do it with the uh, with the power in It was actually a little tiny little Phillips head there. It's a PH0 
for anyone that's interested you probably could use a, a slot head in there as well but anyway that's working good happy with that so next stage then very carefully make sure we're not trapping any cables make sure all the internal cables are routed as best as we can don't foul anything when we put it together check all of the panel gaps everything's gone down nothing's being forced nothing's being pressured so get the casing screws back in give it a polish time for a final reveal Well, there it is then, the MGR61 from Sanyo. Nothing too much to do to it today. I will go in and replace the inner transfer belt at some point. But for now, the idea was really just to replace the main drive belt, get it up and running again so it's not languishing. As I say, this is just going to be part of my collection, so it won't be getting used regularly. But it's just nice to know that it's still working and could be used if we wanted it to. Overall, it is in good condition though. I mean, it's nice that you know it's got its original patina i remember my original sanyo i you know i lived and breathed it really for hundreds and thousands of hours really someone's clearly enjoyed this as well i did go in and clean the head and the capstan and the pinch roller which was particularly dirty so someone on one hand had really loved it and listened to it for countless hours on the other hand obviously i hadn't really maintained it very well but there you go anyway long story short it's all working now so just have a quick listen There we go then so it's working not too bad to be fair and still looks great you know yes it's got a little bit of a patina to it but ultimately it's complete the battery cover clips in nicely the belt clip is attached properly everything works comes complete of course with its original box and as we saw earlier the instructions the warranty card original headphones all that kind of stuff so yeah there we go then the MGR61 from Sanyo. I hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you ever so much for watching. Please check out some of my other videos and consider heading over to my Buy Me A Coffee page if you wanted to make a donation to help with running the channel. Be massively appreciated. I'll be back soon, but you guys, thanks ever so much for watching. Stay safe. I'll see you then. Bye-bye.